We'll talk with several candidates running for office today and repeat the process on October the 22nd with a whole new slate of candidates so we can fit in as many candidates as uh, uh, have agreed to do our forum today. Rob Mario here along with Bill Stubblefield. Bill, good morning. Good, good morning, again, Rob. Sir. Good morning. Great to be here. Each candidate will get an opportunity for an opening statement and a closing statement uh, at the end and in between uh, field questions from uh, Bill Stubblefield and uh, myself as well. We would ask uh, the candidates to limit your opening statements to a minute or so. We won't uh, hold you to the exact 60 seconds and your closing statement uh, similarly. And then in between, your answers to the questions to about two minutes, if you can uh, manage that. If your name or one of your policies is brought up, you have the opportunity to respond directly at the conclusion of that person's uh, thought. Please don't uh, disrupt them in the middle of their thought. Uh, we'll just try to keep that uh, civil as we move along here this morning. Uh, we'll start with uh, opening statements and uh, David Jackson as you are the challenger in this Berkeley County Sheriff's race which is how we begin our day today. I'll ask you to begin with the opening statement today. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is David Jackson. I'm running for Berkeley County Sheriff. I want to bring apart multiple ideas to help bring a symbiotic relationship between the community and the Berkeley County Sheriff's Department. I feel that we need to bridge uh, a good relationship with the community in order to keep moving Berkeley County forward. Sheriff Blair, the incumbent. First of all, let me thank you all for um, holding this forum. I think it's very important that we do these things in uh, election time so people get to know their candidates. And I'm very appreciative of you all taking the effort to, uh, to hold this forum today. So thank you. Um, Sheriff Rob Blair, uh, I'm a Republican lifelong uh, resident of West Virginia. I was born in South Charleston, West Virginia. I was raised in Huntington, West Virginia. I've lived in Berkeley County for 35 years now, since 1989. Uh, I met the love of my life, Mary Beth Kisner, um, in 1994, and we raised three children here in Berkeley County. And now we're having the uh, great pleasure of raising our two grandchildren here in Berkeley County. Um, so it's uh, Berkeley County is home to us. We we certainly love this county and this community. Since a childhood, I've, I've um, wanted to be in law enforcement. My father was a 27-year uh, veteran of the West Virginia State Police. He was also in, Air, Air, in the Air Force for four, four years, and I've looked up to him. So this is what, this is what I know to do. Um, my dad retired as a captain of professional standards with the West Virginia State Police uh, the very year that uh, I came in. Well, Actually, it was 89. I came in in 88, but we served three months together. So uh, I followed his footsteps, and I'm I'm proud to say that law enforcement is is something that I um, I really really hold dear. My father father-in-law was sheriff of Berkeley County for eight years, 1981 through 88, and uh, he's someone that I've looked up to over the years. But uh, my wife and I are very involved in the community. Um, uh, I I know you wanted to just hold it for a, a minute, but um, we, we're our church, Little League, Rec League, uh, the different uh, nonprofits in the in the county. So we love Berkeley County, and uh, that's why I um, chose to serve as sheriff, and uh, that's why I'm running for four more years. Thank you, Sheriff. We'll start uh, Bill with the first question. Uh, good morning, gentlemen, and thank you for being here, and also thank you for running for uh, for the sheriff. I appreciate it very much. We're in a growth county, obvious to everybody. Uh, through the years, there's always been a question, are there enough deputies? Uh, that's even more paramount today that we do have the growth county. We'll start with you uh, first, uh, Sheriff Blair. How do you determine the appropriate number of deputies? That's a great question. And uh, as a matter of fact, prior to uh, uh, serving as sheriff, there was already a, a move uh, with uh, the county uh, commission and the county administrator along with our our command staff and, and uh, deputy sheriff's association input on restructuring our manpower um, and uh, we have an allotment of 68 right now we worked very hard to get to that allotment um, we're at 64 right now and I don't know where our list stands we're hiring four more we just closed it out on the 15th the application process and I'll find out how many applicants we have but you know we're we're, we're very understaffed um, I, that's if you look at the per officer ratio uh, and I think the FBI statistics um, uh, I don't have that in front of me but it's 
uh, we're, we're not even close to where we should be as a community. And I'll, I'll put a footnote to that. The West Virginia State Police, when I left in 2013 as troop commander of the seven counties here in the Eastern Panhandle, we had 30 road troopers and five supervisors that detachment. Um, I can tell you today there's five supervisors and 12 troopers there now, which that puts a strain on the Berkeley County Sheriff's Office because now we have to pick up uh, where they can't. And it's no fault of the troopers. They do a tremendous job, and I advocate for them also. Uh, because they're part of they're part of this community as well as the, the city police. We have great working relationships with them. So uh, we're we're going to do the best we can at recruiting. It's a tough environment to recruit for police officers these days with the the previous defund the police movement, which was absolutely insane. And uh, so I, I know that we have to we have to grow, and that's our intention is to grow our agency. Mr. Jackson. Uh, yes, sir. Um, we are completely understaffed in this. I've, as a citizen, written to the Sheriff's Department and been told we'll try to get around to any issues that you have uh, because of manpower issues or personnel issues. We are at a point when we were at 60 deputies with 135,000 residents, we were one deputy for every 2,250 residents. You just can't work with those numbers. You're, you're going to burn out your deputies, uh, it, it, the calls for service are probably astronomical at that point in time. Uh, you're going to have to rely on the state police to back you up on certain situations. From what I was told, it used to be a 50-50 relationship. Now they told me it's 25-75, in which Berkeley County is picking up 75% 75 of calls. We're going to have to do this smartly if we do it. We're going to have to figure out a way to hire more deputies, I would looked at the possibility of going to military bases and talking to military personnel about hiring veterans, as I'm a veteran myself, and that's how I was brought into law enforcement. We can do this, but we don't want to put a huge burden by raising taxes and everything else on the citizens of this county, because it would Nobody wants to start forking out more and more money. That's one thing everybody's in consensus with is no more taxes. I believe we can do it through grants. I believe that we can petition the state for more additional funding. Uh, since the county commission does have a lobbying group down in Charleston right now, I believe that would be a great thing to do. I believe also if we streamline more things like grant writing within the county and we streamlined all the grant writers into one office, I believe we could probably get better grants and better funding throughout the whole county to include the sheriff's department. But as, as for the recruiting, yes, the sheriff was absolutely correct. The anti-police movement over the past decade has been horrendous. I saw it firsthand, and we it, now that the mentality is changing, you're seeing people start coming forward and start coming back into law enforcement. It's a great career field. But the thing is, also, we need to increase the funding for pay for these deputies. Uh, if you look at the outside jurisdictions in this area, they're higher paying. They're, I mean, I believe they're poaching some of our deputies, from what I understood from people that I spoke with. Uh, we, we need to increase their pay to, to show that we appreciate them as professionals and we want to keep them. So, I mean, there's several different steps that we're going to have to take, but it's going to have to be working with the excuse me, county commission in order to get this done completely. I, I look at it where if I was elected sheriff, I would hire 20 people in the first year. Yeah. Uh, TV audience will be able to hear you without your headsets, Bill. Uh, you both mentioned uh, uh, recruitment, and that's a certain an important element. You also mentioned pay. Uh, but my question was, how do you determine the appropriate level? Is there a quantitative yardstick that you go by that you can determine the appropriate number of deputies? Uh, it's a – the community is going to be very supportive of the sheriff's department. They always have been, but they want some accountability. They want to know that they – that what you're asking for is justified. So what is a yardstick for determining the level is, number is of deputies? Him, him or me? You're asking both of Yes, us? for either one of you, yes. 
Well, um, I found my notes here. Current citizen officer ratio is less than one per thousand. Just take the one here, um, off. Leave it here. here in Berkeley County. The national standard ratio is 2.6 per 1,000. Uh, so we're less we're less than one per thousand, and the national average is 2.6. Uh, per thousand, so we're we're grossly understaffed, and and we're working hard to try to to close that gap. But uh, uh, he he mentioned he would hire 20 deputies uh, within his first year. Uh, I don't think he understands the hiring process. Uh, if I could have hired 20 deputies this past year, you bet you I'd have hired 20 deputies. But there, um, you have civil service that you have to go through. You can't just say, I'm gonna hire 20 deputies, and poof, there's 20 deputies. Uh, we've hired six since I've been in, and uh, we've worked our tails off to get those six. And two of those, by the way, are certified officers from other agencies. So we may get poached here, but we're also looking for certified officers. Now, we're not going out and actively recruiting against um, the, the city and, and state, but we will certainly take certified officers because our goal is to make Berkeley County Sheriff's Office the most professional, well-trained, and uh, uh, the best agency in the state of West Virginia. Mr. Jackson. Uh, yes, sir. As the sheriff stated, I, I believe the, with the national average, we were 0.47 for deputies per thousand. So, yes, we're, we're completely understaffed. Um, when I was in D.C., we tried to maintain the average of one officer per thousand residents in D.C., um, and I believe that's what the sheriff just stated. Now, I stated I would hire 20 deputies. Of course, I would have to go through the county commission in order to get that approved. I just, as the sheriff said, I just can't wave a wand and poof, 20 deputies appear. But the thing is, we need to have a better recruiting. You, you just can't sit back and look for certain people. You need to go out. You need to talk to your military bases. You need to talk and put out information that you'll take laterals, people with prior law enforcement experience, Put out messaging across the, the four-state area. There, I mean, put out national messaging. You're going to have to make a recruiting drive, and if you're going to do it, you're going to have to. You're going to have to shoot for the stars. Okay. okay can I can I address that? Sure, admit, yes. We've done everything he just said. Yeah. So, what he's what he just said. We've been on military bases. We've done all that recruiting. So, um, that's we've done that. Sure. Thank you. Let me shift gears to another subject, if I can. Uh, Currently, the sheriff, constitutionally, you're limited to two terms. Uh, there's been some talk in the past that that should uh, you're the only elective office that is limited, that are limited to two terms. There's been some talk in the past to change the constitution to allow you to be in excess of two terms. What is your opinion on the limitation that you have right now as far as serving? That's true, uh, Mr. Jackson. Let's start with you. Uh, in order to move forward into the future, I believe term limits is necessary. Um, no sheriff should have an absolute power over a county for 10 or 20 years, no matter how nice they are. It's time to get fresh blood in, and you got to you got to work with that. Um, I, I think it's the correct amount of time doing two terms in the office, and then have fresh blood come back in again. You you just can't be stagnant and expect somebody to sit there for 20 years and expect to be able to move into the future. Sheriff? As a constitutional issue, obviously that would be up to the people. And I, I, I would defer that to them. My opinion on it is we, I believe, and I maybe I think we're one of only three states that have term limits on sheriffs. Uh, my good friend in Frederick County, Virginia, Lenny Milholland, he served as sheriff down there. I don't, I don't know how many terms. Um, he does a tremendous job. Uh, he's one of the uh, people that I, I seek counsel from. Um, I, I, to be honest with you, um, I think that's an antiquated uh, 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 thing to have sheriffs not being able to run more than two terms. Obviously, in my situation, this uh, appointment that I received counts as a term, which um, I understood that going in. I, I knew the the people of Berkeley County needed help, so that's why I stepped in to do this. And uh, when I did that, I filed to run for this this term uh, the next four years. But So I believe if you're doing the job, the people should decide that. Uh, and if they decide that uh, they want to change 
uh, the Constitution to allow sheriffs to run unlimited like other elected officials. Uh, I, I'm not opposed to it uh, because I think the people are smart enough to, uh, to elect uh, the best for this but position. Let's stay on the Constitution for a couple of minutes. Uh, the Sheriff's Department uh, uh, is an elected partisan. Uh, a couple of years or so ago, a few years ago, we changed the judges going from partisan to nonpartisan. Should we do the same thing for the Sheriff's Department, make it a nonpartisan race as opposed to partisan? Sheriff? We've addressed this before, and, uh, you know, again, I think that's that, that's up to the, the, the people if that's what they want. But I think uh, being partisan, uh, on, especially on a, uh, on a national level, it, it, it shows what what you're for or what you support, uh, who, you, who you associate with, uh, the national platform, so uh, whatnot. Uh, um, I'm a strong Second Amendment supporter. Um, I, I, I believe in constitutional carry. I think every state in the United States of America should be constitutional carry uh, because uh, creating laws for people to uh, uh, not be able to carry their firearm uh, that just prohibits law-abiding citizens to be able to do that. Um, it doesn't affect it doesn't affect the criminal one bit. Um, so um, I'm a big First Amendment uh, supporter. Your freedom of speech. Uh, so um, you know, I I think um, a sheriff if he's doing doing a good job, uh, he should be able to to run multiple terms. Mr. Jackson. Uh, can you repeat the question, the question about partisan? Should they should the uh, sheriff be a partisan position or nonpartisan like we have with the judges? Yes, sir. As I said when I first came into this race, I stated it should be nonpartisan because your job is not to represent a party. Your job is to represent the people. It's that simple. You, you shouldn't be getting in partisan politics, no bickering, no anything like that. You're here to represent the people, and you're here to enforce the law. I'm not here to make law. I'm here to enforce it. I'm here to represent the people and make sure everybody is represented, whether they believe the police should be here or not. We're, we're here to do a job, and it's, it's just that plain and simple. It's like a judge. Your judge is nonpartisan because do you want somebody who's coming in and saying, I'm, I'm only going to do this. I, I don't agree with this, so I'm not going to do it. It's the same thing with the sheriff's position. Our job is to enforce the laws set down by the legislature of West Virginia and the United States. So, no, I do not believe it should be a partisan. I believe it should be nonpartisan. Mr. Jackson, I'm shifting gears to a different subject altogether now. Uh, in either your introduction or one of your first answers, you made the comment that you would improve the relationship between the sheriff's office and the, the residents of the county. That implies that there is not a good relationship now between the sheriff's office and the residents of the county. Would you expound on that, please? Yes, sir. Through multiple forums that I've been at, I've been told by people over and over that they think the sheriff's office is out of touch. They don't have the proper communication between the two. I've come from a jurisdiction where we had a citizen advisory council where certain areas would get together and the citizens would tell the department this is what we this is what we need this is what we're lacking this is what we hope you'll do this is what we need you to do and I believe we could do that here in the county I believe we can go to all the major areas like Inwood, Jarrettstown, Martinsburg, Hedgesville, Spring Mills uh, and I mean there's several other semi-urban areas where we can get representatives from each of these areas and they could sit down once a month with the sheriff's department and they could say, hey, this is what's going on in our area. Because just because we're police officers doesn't mean we see and know everything. It's up to the citizens to come forward saying, hey, we need this. There's traffic issues. The lights are having problems at a sequence over by Lowe's. I mean, if they want to put in a roundabout is the new rumor that I'm beginning to hear. Work with the Department of Highway. Work, work with the county and work with the citizens to get this across and build a bridge of trust between them because they'll start coming forward. And the more you have the citizens involved, the more transparent you are. And I think that's better for both the Sheriff's Department and the citizens of this county. Sheriff, the same question to you. Do you feel there's a relation problem between the Sheriff's Office and the residents of the county? And if there is, what should you do to improve the relationship? 
I think you're always working to improve relationships with the community. That's 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 uh, the basis of community policing. I've I practiced that my entire career. Um, community policing is just um, getting out and speaking to people, and not just riding through neighborhoods in your in your cruiser with your windows rolled up, uh, having those conversations. Uh, I have many um, community events that I attend and receive input from. The, uh, the citizens of the county, and uh, if it's something that with, is within our policy and law that we can we can enact, we certainly take that uh, serious. Um, any um, complaint or suggestion that comes into our office, I'm more than willing to listen. Uh, we have community events all the time. Our community room, that is our goal, is to have community events at our office. and. Uh, bring people in and that's when we engage and that's when we discuss things um, I would fully disagree that uh, we're out of touch with the community I've been involved in this community for 35 years uh, with my wife and and uh, with my church and uh, the community is everything to me and uh, I want to bring our officers uh, up to a level to where they understand that the community is everything and it takes you know effort to, to to keep uh, enforce or enforcing that idea to your to your deputies that the community is who we're working for uh, the community is everything to us we wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for them so um, you know we we take every complaint every suggestion serious and uh, if anyone has a suggestion that we need to do something they're more than welcome to bring it to our attention and we will give it uh, the best attention and if it's something we can do we will certainly enact it the relationship between the uh, city of Martinsburg police uh, and the Berkeley County uh, deputies uh, should be seamless should be look like a, a flow without any difficulty at all that has not always been the case there's been some rocky history between the two uh, starting with you sheriff uh, what is the relationship now with the city and how should it be improved if it needs to be improved? It's uh, Sheriff Gibbons and I have a great relationship. I have uh, a great relationship with uh, Sergeant Nine out at the barracks. Uh, he worked for me. Uh, we established a uh, multi-agency uh, monthly meeting. Uh, we, we get together every month and discuss um, issues that affect us all, maybe even discuss an issue that may affect one agency and not the other. As a matter of fact, yesterday um, I was uh, um, at home and I received a call from Chief Gibbons on a on an, uh, a personnel issue that he wanted to bring to our attention, um, uh, and uh, I was able to relay that to our uh, command staff and our patrol. And um, it was something that uh, you know we're, we'll pick up the phone and call each other. Um, we have each other's numbers, um, same way with uh, Zach Nine. And, any of the state police, we work well together, and um, I advocate for each agency because I know they're struggling just like we are as far as their manpower and, and trying to cover calls and, and all the responsibilities that come with being a police agency. So um, our, our relationships are strong. Mr. Uh, Mr. Jackson. Yes, um, that's, that's great that the sheriff's working on that, and I, I, I wholeheartedly believe in that. I would just add one thing. I would have a liaison who would just strictly deal on a weekly basis with the city police, knowing do they need support, do we need support from them, and just have that relationship to, to continue to build. Um, you, you, need, you need to have relationships with your surrounding agencies. And since Martinsburg is one of the major urban areas right in the middle of the county, I would say yes. Uh, to have that person as a liaison strictly dealing with Martinsburg and their job within the county. I mean, it's not like they're going to stop working. But to do that, I, I think there is a good relationship and we just carry on with what we have at this point. Okay. Uh, going back to personnel and manpower for a couple of minutes, there was a lot of talk last year about having an SRO presence in every school. Uh, that I think many people feel that's still needed. Is there sufficient manpower to do this? And if not, what 
resources? What, uh, what approaches can you use to ensure there's school safety? Mr. Jackson. Um, from what I was to understand, uh, the legislature passed um, a bill that allowed for armed security in the school. Uh, we don't have enough deputies in this county to cover all of our schools. But if legislature, if I read it correctly, uh, and I was told by a delegate that they want to put armed security in a school, but it would be overseen by the Board of Education, the Board of Education, and the county school district, um, that would be the best thing. But it, you'd have to have a working relationship. You'd have to do the proper background checks. You'd have to do the proper psychological evaluations, and then the proper training, and then you would have a, a an official. For that group respond to your official within the Berkeley County Sheriff's Department and you would have one armed person for each school now I believe instead of just saying they're just a school resource officer I would make them a reserve deputy so when they appear on school grounds they would be a reserve deputy for Berkeley County and be the armed officer for that school when they leave when they leave school grounds they would secure their weapon there and that's the only time they would have those weapons that that's one idea um, and that way all your schools are covered and the state's footing the bill for that so uh, unless I was not told correctly that's what I believe we could do as a Berkeley County Sheriff's Office but as for now no we do, we do not have enough deputies to cover all the schools and, and that's a problem because that all comes back down to resources and personnel. Sure. Um, that was one of my top priorities coming in as sheriff. I've said this many, many times. Our children are our most precious resource. And the fact that we do not have a school safety officer in every school is, um, is unconscionable to me. Uh, I am currently working on a bill to uh, I've been in contact with state delegates, uh, Secretary Sorsea with the Department of Homeland Security and his Deputy Secretary, Mr. Cunningham. Uh, I've researched other uh, states on what they're doing in this process, and there's not a bill uh, that's been passed, uh, to my knowledge, maybe I'm, I'm unaware of it, but uh, I'm actually actively right now working on getting a bill together that will um, fund uh, I call them school safety officers because we have uh, school resource officers, deputies assigned to each high school, and then they're responsible for the uh, surrounding middle schools and, and grade schools. So you have one deputy uh, responsible for multiple schools. That's just not that's just not just not good enough. Um, we do we do school site surveys, safety surveys. We've been out to to uh, Faith and. Uh, some of the other schools that have requested it and every time I tell them one of the best hires you could make is a school safety officer so uh, my bill will incorporate private schools as well as public schools as far as um, how a school safety program will be implemented it will be oversighted by the Berkeley County Sheriff's Office at least the draft bill that I'll that I will present and uh, we'll be in charge of uh, making sure they're up to date on their firearms and, um, and procedures of, of handling uh, uh, people if they have to make a, a detention. But uh, we will be called as the law enforcement to come in and, and uh, take uh, control of the situation once, uh, if, there's, if there's a situation that would occur uh, on school grounds that would cause them to have to react. But we would, we would be the obviously, obviously the responding police agency with that. So yes, there is. Uh, an effort to to uh, draft a bill to get to the legislature to get passed. You, there's two been two models been mentioned. Uh, one would be the SROs or something equivalent to it, uh, be under the auspices of the sheriff. The other would be under the auspices of the board of education. Uh, is there an a, an advantage one way or the other between these two different management structures, uh, Mr. Jackson? I would say completely because what and no offense to the board of education but what would they know about armed training uh, or law enforcement perspective on school security i mean we're training the schools for active shooter situations 
So I think it would the, the oversight that the sheriff's department would have on an armed security for a school would be optimal because you could handle the training and you can handle the background and everything to do with the personnel that's going to be assigned to each one of those schools. So you advocate under the auspice of the sheriff? Yes, sir. Sheriff, I assume you... F f funding wise, it's, 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 it's going to have to probably come from the Board of Education, the funding they receive. Mm -hmm. Training wise and, and uh, how, um, how they uh, uh, are do their jobs is, is, is going to fall under the sheriff's office as far as, you know, the uh, um, use of force, um, especially deadly force. Uh, they have to be highly trained in that area. And um, part of our thought is uh, retired police officers, um, veterans, and, and individuals that have been in situations before that would be able to better react uh, to a situation as opposed to arming teachers, which has been, uh, I'm not opposed to that as long as they're certified and, and, and they're, they're, they're good uh, with handling a weapon, but they should just be there to teach. It should be an individual that knows how to react to these situations and uh, is well equipped to do it. A question for you, Mr. Jackson. Uh, the chief deputy is an important component to any sheriff. You depend upon him in so many ways. Uh, the gentleman that you've got targeted for chief deputy, I do not believe he's been to the academy. Is he qualified to be a chief deputy? Uh, qualified? Yes, yes, I think you. I think they have to be through the academy to be a uh, uh, to be a deputy. Is that not right? I would I would probably have to go through. I've only had Federal Law Enforcement Training Center, and I've had the Metropolitan Police Department. Those are my two academies, so I, I'd have to go through the academy here in West Virginia. Uh, my chief deputy, yes, if, if he needs to go through the academy, yes, he's going to get the proper training in order to fulfill that position. Mm -hmm. But but right now, I do not believe he's qualified. That's I, I do I do not know if he's okay. gone through an academy. Yeah. I know he used to be a reserve officer yeah. with the Berkeley County Sheriff's Office. Okay. Um, how much time do we have, Mr. Mayor? We still have about uh, twelve minutes. If 12. I have a question, if you if you uh, run out your list, go well, go, go ahead. Then I'll can I respond to that? Since Please, yes, sure. Uh, he's not qualified. Yeah, he's not certified. Uh, He's, matter of fact, certified is a better word. Yeah, right. So, he's never yeah. he's never been a police officer, yeah. and um, um, as far as um, um, a sheriff going through the the academy, it's not required by state law either. Mm -hmm. uh, elected officials not required uh, to go through the academy. I have. Yeah. Uh, I'm a graduate of the West Virginia State Police Academy, and uh, so. In regards to the position of sheriff, obviously there are administrative duties to it as well. I'll start with you, Mr. Jackson, as the challenger. How do you view the position of sheriff as more of an administrative position or more of, an, a, law, of a law enforcement position? You're going to have to walk a fine line as sheriff between administrative and law enforcement. I, as a sheriff, I would want to go out with my deputies. I would want to do a ride-along with each and every one of them to get to know my deputies, to, to see how they're working, to see how they're doing traffic stops, to see their demeanor out on the street. I, I want to know every single one of them because these are the people that you're putting your life in their hands. You're going to be going through a door with. These are, these are the people that you have to know inside and out, that you have to trust. Um, as a sheriff, I believe our job, my job, if I get elected, I would go out and answer calls. I'd want to meet the public. I'd go out and do traffic. I would go out there and be a working sheriff. I, I, I won't be an executive. I won't sit behind a desk all day. Now, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done, and that's what the sheriff is going to do, and that's also what a chief deputy does. Chief deputy, it's called delegating authority. You have, a, you have enough command staff, and you can do it. I would see if we have the proper amount of command staff or if we're too heavy, uh, because right now you have a lot of deputies out there. I mean, it, unless you get your hands on and do the job and go out and see what's actually going on out there, I don't think you're going to have a grasp on the situation. Now, that's just my personal opinion if I was to become sheriff. I'm not saying that's what is going on at all. I'm not making any insinuations. I'm just saying I would definitely be a hands-on type of sheriff than more of an administrative sheriff. Sheriff Blair? 
The sheriff's position is an administrative position. Um, it's not only law enforcement. As we well know, um, the sheriff is in charge of the tax office, uh, which carries a, a tremendous responsibility, conservatorships, which I don't think the average citizen understands how many conservatorships we have. Um, it, and it's, it's sad that people have no one else to take care of their, their, their needs, and it falls upon the, the sheriff of Berkeley County to do that. Um, you have animal control. You have, you have a vast array of administrative responsibilities. I've, I've worked the road. I've kicked doors in. And uh, if my deputies need me, I'd be there in a heartbeat. But I have a job to do as sheriff, and that's to make sure that my command staff are doing their job and my uh, middle management are doing their job, my first line supervisors are doing their job. And uh, it's, it's a chain of command. And that's something that we really stressed when I came in, is accountability and chain of command. And that's how a police agency works. Uh, it, it, it sounds great to say you're gonna go out here and kick doors in and run traffic and until you sit in that seat and understand the responsibilities that you have. Now, with that being said, if a door needs to be kicked in and I need to go help somebody, I'll be there with them. Uh, I've done that my entire career. I don't expect my deputies, our deputies, to do anything that I haven't done. Uh, so uh, to your answer, it is a, an administrative uh, job. Uh, 18 of my uh, 25 years with the West Virginia State Police with supervision, uh, administration, and management. And during those years, there were times when I was with my officers going through doors, helping them on traffic stops and whatnot. But my main responsibility to uh, my agency then and my agency now is to make sure we're following policy and procedures and we're doing the right things. Uh, that's one thing I tell them all the time, do the next right thing. And that's, that's my job is to oversee the agency. We have various homeless encampments in the area. Uh, they're not visible to many of us, but they're obviously very visible to you. Uh, what are you doing to uh, uh, to manage, if that's probably a poor word, but to uh, to to monitor and to control the homeless encampments? Start with you, Sheriff. Um, we get complaints on homeless encampments all the time, and if it's a property owner that wants them removed, then we go through the proper process of, of having them removed and giving them um, direction on where to go for help. A lot of times these homeless people have been kicked out of the, the men's shelter, They've been kicked out of other areas that, that offer help. Uh, a lot of times they have uh, drug addiction problems. We work with um, the different um, agencies around uh, for substance abuse and try to help these people. Uh, but as a law enforcement agency, there's only so much we can do. We enforce the laws. Um, I had a, uh, uh, another occasion to work with Chief Gibbons on a homeless encampment out by the Lilly Fields. Uh, and, um, you know, w we can do what we can do according to the law, and that's sometimes serving them with papers uh, to leave the premises. And if they don't leave, then we have to take the next step, uh, forcibly removing them from the property because private property owners have rights and uh, they don't uh, they don't want that uh, unfortunately um, on, the, on their property um, so there's resources for the homeless but you'll find a lot of times that uh, they've they've been banned from from those resources that offer that help and um, you know it's a tough it's a tough uh, yeah. Situation. As a quick follow on, I'll come back to you in a second, Mr. Well, Jackson. We're, we're just about out of time, Bill, because okay. closing statements yep. will be soon. But I'll give Mr. Jackson yeah, a I chance will. to okay. address that mm -hmm. as well. Should you become sheriff, what would your approach to the, some of the homeless encampments be? Uh, empathy. Um, there are so many local outreach groups, so many faith based organizations that would come out here. Uh, try talking to them. Get, them. get them counseling, get them help. Uh, Put them, in, put them in a step forward. A lot of them are veterans, and a lot of them don't realize the VA right here in Martinsburg is willing to help, and there's outreach programs through them. Uh, all we have to do is just show them the right step forward. 
I dealt with numerous homeless encampments in Washington, D.C., and I got many people their jobs, a, a foot, just that one step up, and they were able to recover their life. Um, mental health counseling, uh, get counselors out there, uh, have crisis intervention training with your deputies so they can identify when certain situations need mental health counseling. Uh, we, we have everything in front of us. I, I went online and I've had dozens of people willing to volunteer their time to help with the homeless situation. Now, yes, some of them have been in trouble. Some of them have been banned from certain places to go, but we have to find them a, a way. We, we just can't sit there and say, you can't stay here, you gotta go to the next thing. We, it, it's just kicking the can down the road. You, you just can't do that. You need to address it. And a lot of, uh, I hate to say it, are in mental health crisis. And if we can get someone out there to help deal with it, it, it might alleviate a lot of the problems. And a lot of faith-based organizations are willing to sit there and step forward saying, we have places, we, we can do things to help them out. But you have to take that first step. On that note, we'll move to closing statements. Since uh, Mr. Jackson had the first opening statement, Sheriff Blair, you'll get the first closing statement. I'd like to thank TV10 for, again, having this forum. Uh, I'd like to thank my wife and my family, my extended family, uh, my church family for supporting me in this campaign. Uh, family is everything to me. Anybody that knows me knows that. Um, and I like to thank the good citizens of Berkeley County for supporting the sheriff's office. I'm honored to lead, lead this sheriff's office. I fully, in continue, I fully intend to continue to advocate for all the best areas of our agency, whether it be man, manpower, pay, uh, CIT, he mentioned that we have a CIT program. My first hire was a, a uh, police social worker. Um, so we're, we take that very seriously. And my goal is to have all of our officers trained in CIT uh, and uh, we'll be the best agency in the state of West Virginia. My roots run deep here in Berkeley County. I truly believe I'm the best choice to leave, lead the Berkeley County Sheriff's Office over the next four years. Um, I have the experience and the ability to do the job this past year uh, shows that I took a, a pretty bad situation and uh, I've been uh, blessed to be able to lead this agency forward and uh, I'm honored. It's been an honor of my life uh, to do this. Uh, I'm endorsed by the West Virginia Deputy Sheriff's Association and the West Virginia Sheriff's Association, both, both highly esteemed organizations. You can find out more uh, about other endorsements. I have numerous endorsements from colleagues, professionals, and citizens throughout Berkeley County, you can go to my webpage and see all those endorsements. But I accepted the position of Berkeley County Sheriff because my community needed help. Uh, after much wise counsel and prayer, I believe I did make the right choice in what I'm, I'm doing. And now I'm asking the citizens of Berkeley County to also make the right choice starting on October 23rd when early voting starts, and vote Rob Blair for sheriff. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Mr. Jackson. I'd like to thank you for allowing me to be part of this debate today. Um, I'm just here to let the people of Berkeley County know that there is a choice, um, that there is a path that we can move forward, that we can put modern-day policing skills into everything, that we should be protecting our children and make sure their school is a safe environment that we should be dealing with mental health crisis and finding them proper avenues to do and just not kicking the can down a road. That we should be addressing everything, that we should be uh, answering calls for people requesting help out in, out in the county and not just saying we're gonna answer radio run to radio run. You can't police like that. You can't say we're just gonna answer radio runs and that's it. I've seen it, I've seen it tried and it failed. You, you need to be able to do a multitask and you need to be able to you properly utilize manpower. As the people of Berkeley County, let's do this. Let's make the change. Let's move forward. And I'm that person to do that. I, I, I'm bringing my urban policing and my skills taught from me from Washington, D.C. and the federal government with my training that I'm willing to teach and implement here within the county. Um, it, it, we just can't take the approach that 
it's the same thing. We're one of the fastest, if not the fastest growing county in West Virginia. We have over 135,000 residents. The calls for service are just going to be through the roof. We need to utilize proper funding. I don't want to put a tax burden on the citizens of Berkeley County. I, I, wanted, I want to be able to use everybody else's funds and having to go in their pockets. The federal government's there. Let's utilize it. Let's streamline this government. Let's pay our deputies the pay they need to do. Let's address the problems that every citizen has. We can make a list and we can address it. Now, I can go through and I could say, all right, I lived here for 17 years and everything. I mean, I'm not a lifelong West Virginia resident. I moved here 17 years ago when I was working with the Metropolitan Police Department. I love this area. I love the citizens. It's nice where you can just go down the road and a complete stranger will wave to you. It's that, it's that home feel that I can, kick, I, I can carry on a conversation with the person standing in line at Walmart with me and not know them, but by the end of the conversation, it feels like I've known them for months. Um, I just, I'm asking you, the citizens of Berkeley County, please elect me as your sheriff. David Jackson, the challenger, Rob Blair, the incumbent. Thank you both for being here today, and good luck to you both on Election Day. Thank you. Thank you, sir.